Is that all right? Okay, so my name is Ian Moore, interdimensional wizard. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> and uh, my purpose here is I've arrived here on this planet to create some form of civilization. Some people get the idea of a new civilization. Uh, that's okay. And uh, I've been working for a long time to do that. <laughs> um, 30, well over 30 years or so. And what's amazing for me is what's been happening this last, well, year really. It's just extraordinary how people are waking up and seeing these uh, truth juice here, these truth juice movements. And also things like, I mean, so many movements all over the internet and everywhere. Uh, things like um, the Occupy movements. Has everybody heard of, like, the Occupy movements? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> You're here? Are you from Occupy Birmingham? Birmingham yes. You are from Occupy Birmingham? Yeah. You are from Occupy Birmingham. Excuse me, everybody. Occupy Birmingham. What are you doing here, then? Thank you. Brilliant. And you as well. I, I'm Auntie Shirley. I provide the food and the horse well done, darling. and well the done. ears. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> well, the reason why uh, I take particular note of that is that um, I've just been helping to get an Occupy um, movement going down in Devon. I've just come up from Totnes uh, in South Devon and uh, have discovered some amazing things about how to have command over authority. <laughs> Let's really kind of understand that sentence. Uh, how to gain command over authority. And when I say authority, I mean all of it. The whole thing. In other words, you name it, <laughs> we become the source point of it. Sorry, being an interdimensional wizard, sometimes I say things very directly. Um, but basically, just putting it very simply, uh, we started off the other day uh, at the bottom of the high street in Totnes and came up the street saying to people, you know, life's not all about money, 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 it's about change the world, you know, and some people talk about banks and things like that, but there's global warfare and the whole system's crashing, and isn't it about time we had something better, something new? Let's hear your ideas, come on, share with us, let's have a forum, let's get round, let's get some true democracy. Does everybody know what the real word democracy comes from, where it comes from, and what it means? Demos is Greek, meaning people, and kratos is Greek, meaning power. The word democracy means people, power. And the idea that, for example, in many places in the world, is that, yes, every four years, you get to put a little X in a little box that says that this dingbat is going to control your life. This, uh, I can't even talk about him. And then this one is just has decided up front, I'm going to completely ruin everything about your life, uh, take away all your rights, um, and just be a complete idiot as well. But that's what's so wonderful about democracy, is that you have choice. You can choose, choose to be hung, drawn, and quartered here, slaughtered here, or simply drowned over here. <laughs> this is a free country. That's a true choice. <clears throat> That's not really my definition of democracy. Now, some of you here, I gather quite a lot of you here, are expecting the wizard to come with his toys. Okay? Yeah, okay, I've brought toys. Yeah, all right. But let's try and understand a, a scale of importance. In other words, some things are more important than others. And so the creation of a new civilization on the planet is actually quite important. And uh, the, the, the data and the information that I've got, I'll be coming over to the Occupy uh, Birmingham protest later on today, and we'll share very specific information which you guys are going to love. You're going to love it. 
Um, and I'll try and share a little bit of that with you today, sort of some empowerment. Um, and don't worry, I will play with some toys. Um, so, what would people like to talk about at the moment? Because you've kind of, uh, you know, you've gathered here. What is it that you want to say to me? Could we talk about the weather? Can we talk about the weather? Yeah, yeah that would be nice. It's <laughs> well, there is this idea that there's some talk about the weather being changed or modified. Um, I remember reading on a military website. Uh, sorry, not a military weapon, on the harp. Does everybody know about harp? Yeah. Okay, can I ask you this? Um, can you put your hand up like that so that it's clear? Okay, rather than mm -hmm. but, uh, clear. Who here has heard about harp? Okay, a lot, but perhaps a few not. Okay, it stands for High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. Shall I say that again? High Frequency, what was it again? <laughs> Active Auroral Research Program. So basically this is about mucking about with high frequencies and seeing what you can do with the aurora, which means northern light, or northern lights. Um, and on their website, uh, about two, three years ago when I first looked at it, it said, the purposes of this is for weather modification for military and domestic purposes. It doesn't seem to be on their website anymore. But I read those words and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. And we have had some very extraordinary weather the last three years. You know, including earthquakes that set off atomic bombs in Japan and <laughs> atomic things and we've had all sorts of stuff going on and New Orleans kind of fell into a big hole and you know there's been quite a lot of interesting stuff that's been happening in the last few years. Haiti and I can't list them all. So it makes you wonder, hmm, I wonder if such a thing is, is possible. Now Tesla, who I will be talking about tonight, was a fascinating guy a hundred years ago and uh, he made uh, some very interesting researches um, and made a big coil uh, that made 12 million volts and he was mucking about with the planet itself and what can you do with the planet. He discovered that when you flick the planet with electricity, like a drum, if you flick it, that it goes into resonance. And he discovered that you can do the same with the planet. And it would go right up to the whole planet, you can get into resonance. <laughs> Electrically, not mechanically, because that would be an awful lot of earthquakes, but with electricity doing that. And he was researching that so that he could, if you set that going, that means that with a small coil, you could extract electricity from that energy anywhere on the planet. Of course, he's still putting the energy in, in Colorado Springs, where he was doing it. So that's, it's not free energy, but he's putting it in Colorado Springs, in the ground. And at 93% efficiency, you could take it out from anywhere on the planet, instead of having wires. That's what he was writing. In other words, how to get electricity from A to B. That's what he was researching, amongst other things. And during that research, he, with his coil, um, perhaps we should get it. Did somebody get it? Okay. Um, I'm from Druidy, so I will go to do a run rate on Back door, back door, the Tesla coil. Now what I'm looking for. Um, can somebody get me a fluorescent tube? Anybody willing to get me a fluorescent tube? Can you get one? Magic. Um, I mean, I'd just see what, you know, ask the staff, whatever, just <laughs> grab one out of the kitchen, just make it happen. Um, right. Well, what I would like to talk about, really, is the creation of a new civilization and the creation of a new world and how we can go about that. Because having discovered some extraordinary things recently, 
um, like I say, about how to deal with authority and deal with people and all that kind of stuff. Um, like I've even got counsellors at the moment, like paying my car parking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the Occupy protest, and I've got them paying my car park. Do you know what I mean? I was just, we've only been there three or four days, a few days. Um, and we've said, well, okay, well that building over there, we'll have that one, that's not in use. You know, and you've got to write, okay, we'll see what we can do. Um, because there's a slightly different approach that's needed. Just a different approach. Um, because what I'm beginning to understand is, is that you as a being, you are a, um, a spiritual being, if you like, and that the physical world is a reflection of what is happening inside you. And, but at the moment on the planet, there's quite a lot of chaos and confusion. I don't know if anybody's noticed. <laughs> yeah? It's pretty full on out there at the moment. And so what we have to do then is have some clarity of thought. Um, and I would like to present some things that you might find useful in that. Um, so one of the questions that I've thought about for myself is if I create what I experience, then how come there's so much chaos and confusion in the world? What, it is, it, what is it about me that needs uh, shifting, changing, modifying? Yeah? No, I mean... Pardon? <laughs> oh. Um, that's fine, thanks. Um, um, yeah, okay. If we bring that, if we, that extension come over here, it's probably fine. Um, don't plug it in, don't plug it in, don't plug it in. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but we could do with a, a, fluorescent, a fluorescent tube, Andy. Okay. Uh, the other chap is looking for one as well. Um, yeah. How, how many people is that real for? What I was just saying there about the outside is the reflection of the inside. Is that real for anybody? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, a few, a few. Okay, let, 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 let me, let me add, pick up enough people there. Um, <clears throat> does anybody get the idea with and agree with, smile and the world smiles with you? Yeah, everybody happy with that? Okay. And so therefore, if you're walking down the street as a kind of happy-go-lucky kind of person, you know, the people come along and you go, oh, hi, you know, how's it going, blah, blah, blah. You tend to have a kind of lucky life. Nice things happen to you that people come along, hey, would you like this? Oh, you can use that, and that's fine. And things go smoothly in your life if you're giving out that kind of vibration. Whereas if you're giving out the vibration of being a miserable git, <laughs> well, you know, you'll find yourself not really being very happy in that people kind of don't really come round, and I don't see why I'm on my own all the time. And, you know, I don't really understand why people are being like that, because, you know, I'm in the trouble as well. I mean, you know, sod it, I, I don't care about them in any way. It was factual who started it. You know, uh, then you're not necessarily giving out lovely high-frequency, yeah, come on, let's go play, energies. And when you give out en lovely energies, well, people recognize that and they see that and they want to play and join in and, and, and life becomes good. But when you kind of like, you know, can't be bothered and that's what you know, why don't you not just get started? Um, well, life doesn't necessarily go the way that you'd like it. So, um, so that would be like the power of attraction. You know, many people have read lots of books recently, things like, um, Oh, I don't know, these books. There's a film called The Secret. Mm. Can anybody see it? It's a little bit American, perhaps. I, I know, I'm a little bit like that. But, but, but nevertheless, it's still basically trying to say, you know, uh, wish power is of use, you know, and, and, and the, it's trying to say that if, you, if, you, if you're positive in life, then positive things happen. 
Um, but I mean, there's a million books, and I'm sure that many of you have read all the sort of <coughs> self-help stuff and chakras and you know anything that's going to take you up another level. Yeah, how many people here have been doing stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, most, okay. So in other words, self-improvement, trying to understand more about the mind or more about the being, trying to understand more about the mechanics of the world, the mechanics of the physical universe. Some people are studying uh, sacred geometry and how does that fit together and how does that change the world. So there's many things like that. Um, well, the more that you go up that route, that, that kind of level of understanding, my experience is, is the happier you become. Because you understand more. Life is easier to play. It's fun. You know, it, it, life becomes, e I mean, uh, fun, easy. Um, so it is definitely true that what you think and feel really does affect what your life's like and what you're experiencing. It really does. And you could say that not just because, you know, if you're nice to people, people would be nice to you, but also physical objects, the actual physical things in your life, uh, the physical world does operate off vibrations and energies. So the vibes that you give out, things start coming into resonance with that. Does everybody know this about if you get a, two guitar strings that are both tuned to E, and you pluck one, the other one will start to, to, will start to vibrate as well. Okay? So what energies you're giving out, others, the things that are in your environment that are in tune with that, will start vibrating as well. Um, so again, the energies that we give out have an enormous influence on what we're experiencing. And the more skills that you gain in recognizing your, um, how to command your own vibrations, the more that you can have things the way that you want them. Okay? Now I take that very, very, very literally. I'm a bit odd. But then being an interdimensional wizard, what do you expect? <laughs> and so I take that all the way. I tend to do that. I take that all the way. And I don't just mean that if you talk nice, people will talk nice to you. I mean that everything that's happening has got something to do with my thinkingness. And when I say everything that's happening, I mean everything on the whole planet. In other words, if I think the right thoughts, um, wars will stop. If I think the wrong thought, well, who's right and wrong, I don't know. But, you know, uh, I do believe that, it, that your influence is much bigger than you think. Much, much bigger than you think. And that really, you can change the planet, literally, by changing your mind. Simple as that. I'll give you an example. Today I went to the Leicester protest, and uh, I was saying to these guys, you know, to the Occupy protests, beautiful, lovely guys, lovely guys, and they really could do with anybody's support, go over there, give them cakes, give them tea, take us some candles, you know, make the place look sweet, you know, anything you guys can offer. Because this is a wonderful forum space where people can come. But, you know, if you... Uh, if you put energies out that are positive, so I started going up the front and saying, hi everybody, come on, let's gather up around here. You know, so just walking around the street, I didn't have this megaphone, but just, just, just talking like that and saying, um, this is a forum space, come and talk, share your views. We don't even mind if your views is that we should pack up and we should go home. Come on, come and tell us about it. Come and talk, come and communicate, come and share us. Share with us. You know, we're trying to create a new world here. Life's not just about money, money, money. Life's not just about wars elsewhere. It's about making some kind of civilization we can all be proud of. Something worthwhile. Not, you can't park there. If you park there, that'll cost you 30 quid. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is not, this is not civilized. 
and um, mm, mm, that sort of stuff. That sort of stuff. This is one of my toys. I like this one. So let's do the test. Have we found a fluorescent tube yet? No, nope, still hunting. If Pull I one out. Aid screwdriver. I can nick one out of the emergency. Yeah, yeah. Just, just go. And, just go and pinch one out. <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell kitchens me. usually have them. Kitchens. <laughs> There'll be one in the kitchen. No, he's having a look in the kitchen for you. All oh, right, great. Um. So where should we go from here? Then? So what does anybody want to talk about next? So we did weather. Intergalactic risk. Really? Excuse me, could you, do you know anything about the right, the cloud bursting thing? Yeah. Could you say something about that? Yeah, I can. It fits in quite well with what he's talking about. Let's take a few first. Okay, that's a fractal. It's also a crop circle. That's one of the crop circles. Yeah? Um, okay. So, intergalactic wizardry, yeah. not interdimensional wizardry. Oh, well, right. Galaxies, little tiny little. <laughs> in the dimensions, right? Um, <laughs> okay, my understanding about life is exceptionally simple. Very, very simple understanding. In my understanding, the dimensions, as far as I'm concerned, there are two. Just two dimensions that I'm bothered with, yeah? And that's basically me as a soul, as a spirit, whatever you want to call it, and it. <laughs> the physical world. So it's like soul and physical. That'll do. Oh yes, okay, we can divide the physical to into length and breadth and X, Y, Z and the time span and stuff, you know, the usual dimensions, but is it really necessary to cut it all up that much? As far as I'm concerned, there's two things, there's me and it. <laughs> there is that which is experiencing and that which is experienced. <laughs> and even those, I kind of wonder whether they're two sides of the same coin. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? You know, I wonder if they're actually connected anyway. Um, wizardry. So first of all, I think that we're all spiritual beings. Who, who, who here thinks they're a brain? Is anybody here who thinks they're a brain? No? Right. Okay. Sorry? You have a brain. Exactly. Um, some people think that, uh, obviously not here, but some people think that there's no such thing as soul and that we're all brains and that thinking happens in the brain. You know, and that's the source of all thinking and life and everything. And that consciousness is some kind of illusion or something that's created by chemicals in the brain. This is the sort of... I mean, I don't know how, that, that idea is pretty, it's fading out pretty rapidly. Um, but, uh, okay, let me, let me ask the other question the other way around, the other way around then. Who here considers themselves to be a soul or a spiritual being? Okay, is there anybody here who doesn't have their hand up? <laughs> right. What would you consider yourself to be, or you haven't made your mind yet? No, I'm a mixture of both. Sorry? I'm a mixture of both, I'm not one or the other. Gotcha. Both. Okay, okay. Well, that's, that's reasonable as well. So these things really are quite fascinating, and I would hope that this evening I can give you more <laughs> of an idea that might, might help you in understanding, perhaps. These are just simply my views, and anything that I share with you tonight, it's very, very important to understand this. 
This is what I think today. Mm. Oh, you got a big tune. Sorry? Big tune. Big tune, excellent. <laughs> the loser ladies lose upstairs. Uh, well done. Good man, thank you very much indeed. Yes. Um, so, yeah, anything that I'm saying here tonight is just what I think today. And tomorrow I might think something entirely different. Uh, and let me say, I frequently do. <laughs> right? I really mean that. Sometimes I go, no, 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 that's completely the other end of the spectrum is more like the truth. So I can only give you a snapshot of what I've got now. Got it? Um, but I consider that you as a being, you as a soul, as a spirit, whatever you want, as a consciousness, whatever you want to call it, um, you are, you know, define soul. Define it, sir. Define what you mean. Well, I would start off by saying that you are not matter, energy, space, or time. Those things are the physical universe. Matter, energy, space, and time. You are not constructed of any of those. That's the physical world. Sorry? Yes, it is. You can actually apparently weigh photons. Yeah, you can weigh a photon. <coughs> I gather. Um, that, uh, yes, yes, but I do understand what you mean. It's not immediately visible. But it's still of the physical world. But it's an interesting concept, actually. And, I'm, and I'm, I've stuck that one in here. Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to... Well, she'll, she'll trip you up every time. They're very good. I'm not eating. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine, that's fine. But, but essentially, essentially, the physical world, just normally, you know, has stun, suns and things, and, 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 and helicopters and, and, and cheese sandwiches. And you are definitely not a cheese sandwich, you're definitely not a helicopter, and you're not a sun. Okay? Uh, so you're not a physical object. Or, you know, matter, energy, space, and time, you're not constructed of any of those things. And yet, you do have the capacity to produce energy. And uh, so, I could give you an example of you as a being, the different energies that you produce. Yeah? Does everybody know what E equals MC squared is? Yeah? I understand, yeah. Yeah, but the actual equation, E equals MC squared, right? I'll just describe it to everybody, because it's actually very simple. What it means is, is that E measured in watt seconds, so like these are a 20 watt light bulb, each one of these is a 20 watt light bulb. So if that went for one second, uh, that's what they call a joule, is a watt second. And so E, measured in watt seconds or joules, equals uh, E equals M, that's matter, uh, measured in kilograms. Okay, so if we got a kilogram of sugar, or a kilogram of coal, or a kilogram of cheese, or uranium, or feathers, it doesn't make any difference. A kilogram of stuff, <laughs> yeah, get us. Get a kilogram of stuff, yeah? <laughs> like carton of, an old, carton of orange juice size. <clears throat> so the amount of energy, E, in that matter, equals M, matter, times, so that would be one, one kilogram, right? One, one times C squared. Well, C is the speed of light. Okay? which is 300,000 uh, meters a second. So it's 300,000 squared. 300,000 times 300,000, which equals a big number. <laughs> okay? So the amount of watt seconds in a kilogram of stuff equals big number. That's E equals mc squared. In other words, matter is nothing other than energy squished up, squared, times squished up, 
It's really, really, really squished up. That's what this is. This thing is light, is energy, super squished up. That's what it is. Wakey, wakey! Hello! He's sleeping! Wake up! Wake up! You get the idea? You know, that that much, which weighs, you know, crikey, 30 kilograms or something, you know, I mean, that would run Birmingham, you know, for a year or something. Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. now next we come to some very interesting questions. Well, E equals MC squared, I'm not 100% sure that I'm in agreement with. <laughs> huh? I don't understand. Can you speak up? Sorry. Saturn? I don't understand. Carry on. Okay. Um, so, I'm not entirely sure that I agree with how squished up it is. Um, because you as a being, you emanate energy. You give it out. It comes from you. See, some people are not quite sure, you know, they hear these things, but here's an example of your energies that you give out. Have we got here, um, Andy, have we got any kind of board that I can write on, if that's easy or not bother? It, only if it's just there. Have a quick peek. If it is there, yeah, I'll see. <laughs> With a marker, yeah. Are even going to move when I'm going to see if I can come Well, we'll see, we'll see. Otherwise, I can just describe it. But for example, if, uh, okay, so my energy, yeah, you know, it's quite like fun up here. Yeah. Whereas um, if I change the energy, you'll see the difference. Um, um, <coughs> just a little bit from there, you'll get grief. That's something a bit like, um, yeah, well, um, um, I don't really know what to say next, really. So I hope nobody minds here. But I hope you're having a good time. It is, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It is, isn't it? More lentil. Um, so that's grief. And then um, a little bit higher, fear. Um, right, okay. Um, well, thank you for coming um, here today. And I hope that you enjoy uh, the, um, the um, talk this evening. And. Um, and that you'll tell your friends that it was okay. I'm sorry if I um, have said anything that you don't like. Right. Um, um, as I was saying, the, the Tesla coil is a very interesting... Um, um, don't touch it. Right. <laughs> Fear. Uh, next one above that would be um, anger. Well, there's one in between, actually. Covert hostility. Hello. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. You know, I'm glad that you're all there. Um, oh, it's nice to see that you've come again. That's nice. Oh, we've got set clothes on us last time. That's right. Yes, you always wear that, don't you? <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, I don't know, stabs in the back, that sort of uh, kind of vibe. But anyway, above that, anger. Anger, right, okay. Sorry, can you just not mind leaving things around here? Right, okay. Can you sit properly there, please? <laughs> Goodness sake, and what are these bloody papers you've been just lying about with? 
Right, now is this thing working yet? Nothing bloody works around here. <laughs> yeah. Anger. Something wrong with everything. Something wrong with everything. Yeah? Anger. And then the next one above that, antagonism. You know, so what, what is it that you want actually? I mean, you sat there at the front, you know, you've played the best seat, right? <laughs> You know, and then oh, you give me the nice smiley face. Yeah, but what is it that you're trying to, what are you trying to say? You want your money's worth. That's what it is. Give it to somebody here, that's all it is, it's just money. Right. Well, at least you've made your position clear. <laughs> antagonism. That's antagonism. Got it? So, that's very different to anger. Anger is just there's something wrong with everything. Oh, and the thing that was really annoying me, I would never face. I'd take it out, I'd kick the cat. Right? Rather than actually facing the thing that was, uh, that did need to be dealt with. Are you with me? So anger is dispersed, and antagonism is direct. <laughs> Above antagonism, you've got boredom. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Well done, that man. Can you bring me a Ferrari? <laughs> you know, we were talking about the secret, yeah? You know, we were talking about that video I said called The Secret, the American one that talks about the power of attraction. Well, one of, oh, thank you very much, sir. Well, thank you. That's very, very, very good. Thank you, uh, But The Secret, uh, one of the ones is... Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> in the secret it talks about you know if you want a ferrari then you've got to think about having it and you've got to be all positive and this kind of thing and then there's another book which says which is called if the secret's so good where's my ferrari <laughs> anyway um so how far have we got let's 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 just see that i'll just, just do this very quickly so apathy Grief, fear, covert, meaning hidden, hostility, so hidden, hidden hostility, uh, anger, antagonism, and boredom, up to here. Right? Don't worry, we're going up. We are going up. I know I'm talking about low wavelengths at the moment. Oh, and by the way, it does go down below, yeah? <laughs> but, but this is where most people rage. So above bo uh, boredom, then, it's like, um, yeah, this is all right, though. No, it's all right here, isn't it? I don't know which one to use. Well, anyway, maybe you fancy a drink or something? Yeah? <laughs> Sorry. Um, right. Um, what are we doing? Will we go and go for a drink? Is there anyone else going? Oh, you want me to carry on? Okay. Um, uh, well, whatever. Um, do you have some chips? Have you got any chips? <laughs> you know, it's all right. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's all right. It's nice. It's good. <laughs> Okay, above that then, we've got uh, interest. Interest. That's interesting. They're quite nice shoes, those, aren't they? Look, I've got the same um, the laces. But do you do yours up over the top one or just further down? You do use the top one, don't you? I do as well. I can't. Well, the trouble is that sometimes it can get a bit tight then, can't it? you got the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, mate? Um, you know, it's quite sort of... Yeah, it's all right, that's interesting, you know. Ah, tell me about that. Okay, then above that, with a small C, conservatism. Conservatism, keeping everything the same. So this would be me speaking here now. This is an interesting scale. Uh, so this is projects, you know, let's get a team going here and let's see if we can actually get something constructive going. Um, yes, uh, what was the, you know, it, it's very, 
uh, productive, you know, it's quite reasonable, keeping everything, you know, tickety-boo, keeping it going, so they wouldn't use the word tickety-boo, um, you know, but it's programs, projects, uh, something, something proper, you know, maintenance services and what have you. Okay, so that's quite good, they're constructive, get things built and get your house built. This guy won't build a house very easy. And I suggest you don't get this guy to build your house. <laughs> Otherwise, when you go to the toilet, I think you're going to find some very strange things going on. <laughs> little squirt on the um, uh, uh, Conservatism, uh, strong interest. Okay? By the way, as I go up here, you might start seeing a couple of things that people don't normally experience from other people. That's, um, so it's okay. It's just an interdimensional wizard, kind of clowny person. It's okay. I literally was describing some of the wonders up here the other day, and people were going, whoa, 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 you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, strong interest. Hey, I'll tell you what, is your, what's your beard like compared to mine? <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, yours is actually slightly fluffier, isn't it? <laughs> Ah, oh, right. Yeah, mine's slightly, slightly more. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Hey, what are you like right in there? Do you know what I mean? It's quite, it's quite, it's quite strong. It's quite strong. You want to see what's going on. You know, what are you writing here? Well, these little, little notes on what we've been talking about. Excellent. Great. So, <coughs> strong interest. Strong interest. Uh, then... Uh, Cheerfulness. It's nice, isn't it? Oi. Everybody having a nice evening? Yeah? Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Smiley and that? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? Is everybody happy here? It's good, isn't it? I like it. Smiling and nice, this sort of nice. Mm. <coughs> hey. enthusiasm. Yeah, hey, that's brilliant. Hey, look at that. Oh, I like that. What's that thing you've got there? Look at that. I saw that right over there. See these flowers? Look, that's just like mine. Brilliant. Oh, I love it. No, it's nice to see it. Brilliant. Everybody doing okay? Doing all right? Yeah? You having a good time? Having a good time? So I'm talking a lot, but that's just the way it goes, you know. But everybody enjoying themselves, yeah? Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm, so this would be, hey, tell you what, after this, does anybody want to come down the uh, Occupy protest in Birmingham? Yeah? What do you think? What do you think? We could go down there, we could show, you know, can you imagine it? If they're sat there, you know, you know it's cold, sitting there around, you know, Everybody come in, yeah. and suddenly we all turn up there in enthusiasm. <laughs> With the Chinese in your hand. With the Chinese in your hand. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Exhilaration, right? Wow! Oh man, that's just incredible! I've never seen anything like that in my life. Oh come on, let's go out. Let's go out. Let's get one of these. Um, have you seen that guy with that jetpack thing? Have you ever seen that guy with that jetpack thing? He's got this aircraft thing. He attaches it on like wings, right? And he's got these two jet engines that he's made himself. And he's stood at the, on from Dover, you know, the White Cliffs of Dover? And he's gone in this jetpack <laughs> across to France with literally a jet, a, a jet aircraft, you know, one of these. Um, you know, military things, and they're looking out, watching this guy going, that's acceleration. You get the idea? Wow. <laughs> You're very curious now, aren't you? <laughs> you like it? Get this, isn't it? Aesthetics. And there's many points in between here as well. 
you know, these are just sort of big jumps. Aesthetics is more like above what I was just doing, and more like, ah, oh, ah, oh, that's so beautiful, ah, oh, so, so, so beautiful, ah, oh. you know, it's up there, you get the idea? You know, something really, really beautiful, beautiful, yeah, that kind of up there, as long as you're not what? A moth. A moth, oh, attracted to the light. <laughs> Handy. Oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but just simply, it's not necessarily a Buddhist thing or whatever, but just the idea of being... This is where you have fully recognised that you are a being, and you're not entrapped in anything physical, or any of the machinery of the physical universe, or the machinery of others. Do you know what I mean by machinery? You know, kind of like... Uh, you have this parking ticket here, and you've got to pay it on Thursday the 27th of November, otherwise it goes up to 80 quid. Okay, yeah, but look, if I pay the 30 quid by check, <laughs> machinery. It just means <laughs> locked down into life, yeah? But up here, that you just have the ability to be out of that. You don't have to be involved if you don't want, yeah? Can I just ask, when you've been showing us these various roles and you talk about these energy levels going up yes things like anger and antic antagonism you'd have thought would be further up in terms of what we're observing of your energy do you mean how much energy or do you mean to me what works going up that chart is how much degree of control you have over your energy which I is see. different to what we're I'm observing not with your energy i understand i'm i mean obviously here just giving a demonstration uh, you know, I, I, I might not be doing it exceedingly accurately, but to give you the idea. And also, it's not necessarily to do with the amount of energy of you, you moving your body. It's true that when I was in antagonism, I was going on, I was quite motionful, and yet in boredom, I wasn't. So it's energy appearing. Yes, I'm talking about wavelength, frequency, not necessarily how active the body is. Because, for example, you know, right down, down at the bottom somewhere, you know, you could still might be really strongly with somebody. You could also write the board in a circle. Um, and then when they have a, a I think, yeah, they're, they're more likely to fit into a circle or a cycle. Yeah, because they're dimension. Okay, I hear what you're saying. And it is true to say that at this level, Serenities. at this level, people would understand because uh, further up, 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 up here, you have greater understanding. I'll give you an example. Somebody's in apathy, right? They're sat there like that, yeah? There's no point in anything. You know, I don't see, I can't even be bothered to talk to you. It's a real apathy. Well, if you come leaping in, if you come leaping into them and start speaking to them in cheerfulness, they won't understand you. This is, the higher up here, the greater understanding as well. So for example, somebody in apathy, they will only understand somebody one level above. I mean, they might get a little bit of that one. One and a half above them, perhaps. So their level of understanding, they can understand somebody who's like this. So in other words, I don't know if you've ever done that, you see somebody who's, okay, a better one. Somebody's in grief, right? Yeah, well, when she left, I didn't really know what to do, you know, and I, I've been sat here most of the night because, you know, she just got up and went, and I, you know, right? If you come and slap this guy on the back and say, oh, don't worry about it, come on, mate, let's go out, let's go out down dancing, to play on the chicks about, you have a nice time, come on, let's go out. No, it's no, no, it's I'm all right, mate, you go out and enjoy yourself. He's not going to get it. Right? Whereas if you go into fear, you don't understand. So this geezer, he's sitting there, you go, oh shit, mate, mate, I don't really know what I'm doing really, because, you know, one minute we were all right and then we're not. Now if you say to him, so what happened, mate, in fear? What happened, mate, you know? Crikey, you know, where's she gone? Is she all right? Is she all right? Are you all right? You know, it's like if you give the express fear, you know, but crikey, what, 
But I mean, it's like the end of everything. I mean, what, 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 what does that mean? <laughs> right. Well, I don't know, mate. She just phoned up and she just ran out the house. I just tried to do it. I don't know where she's gone or what she's doing. I mean, she could be anywhere, really. And I'm just trying to do my best with her. And she, the way that she's talking, like, and she could be anywhere now. He's coming up to fear, right? So then you go into, I oh, don't bother with that one. Just get, that's actually a, a smaller one if I'm rude, to anger, right? I mean, you could say, oh yeah, well, they're all the same, aren't they? You put boredom next to apathy? No, these are, these are harmonics. That's, sorry, come to that in a second. Boredom is a harmonic of apathy. But hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Allow me to come through this route, and you'll understand. Uh, you made this up for me, got this from somewhere. No, I'm coming to that. Just, just allow me. Just allow me. Because yeah. uh, it's quite confusing to try and assemble this and communicate something quite refined. There's quite a refined communication here. Um, yes, so you've now got the guy in fear, which is like, yeah, well, I mean, she could be anywhere, you know. And the thing is, is, I don't even know if we're going on, carry on, or whatever, in any way. You know, I mean, is she going to come back and pick up her stuff? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, they think, right? It's becoming up to fear. Um, well, if you go into, yeah, you could jump into covert hostility for a moment. You know, I said, yeah, well, they're all the same. I mean, what do you expect? You know, or, oh, yeah, well, of course, she's probably just seeing whoever she wants to see, I suppose. She's just making up her own mind, isn't she? Oh, we know what you're talking about. <laughs> right, you know. But, but if you go into anger, um, yeah, but she can't do that to you, mate. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, you've, I mean, you've been brilliant for her. You've given her a flat, you've done this, you've done that. I mean, look, every time I've seen you, you've always been nice to her. You've been, you know, well, why she, why she, why she, what's the matter with her? That's a trouble with her. They're all bloody the same, mate. Right? He's going to start going, well, you know, I don't know where she is and all that. And, well, yeah, 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 it's right, because I did. Uh, you know, it, it's true that I, 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 uh, yeah, I gave her the flat, she's got her own keys, I've never charged her any rent or anything like that, and she's just come here, and as far as I'm concerned, she's just uh, taken, uh, abusing my generosity and that, and the trouble is, oh, I love her to be, so the trouble, you know, I mean, what are you supposed to do? But you come up. You go up even further than antagonism. Yeah, but have you ever spoken to her directly? Well, what do you mean, mate? You know, I mean, it's not my fault. What are you trying to say? It's not my fault. I'm trying to do my best. Look, come on, what is it that you, I mean, what did you do? What have, what have you said to her that's made her be like that? It's not me, mate. What makes you think that I've been like that? What are you trying to say that it's me that's forced her to go off? It ain't my fault, mate. You going to boredom? Yeah, I suppose you're right. Well, all right, do you fancy some chips? <laughs> well, well, the trouble is, I mean, you've come in here and you've talked, you know, and I've been trying to tell you. <sighs> you know, and you're just going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're sat there, you know, putting something else on the telly, or putting something in a video. In fact, you wanted a video or something. <laughs> right, and he's going, <laughs> um, So, you know, would become perhaps. Have some chips, it might be all right. Well, I don't really mind what we do, really. Yeah, all right, I've been out of the He would come down the pub. And while you're down the pub, you see, when you, when you came in in cheerfulness down to apathy, he wouldn't come down, down to grief or whatever, he wouldn't come down the pub with you. Now, in boredom, yeah, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Go down the pub, yeah, chat about it, I suppose, you know, whatever. So he will come this time, because you've got him up here. Now, interest, you could kind of go, so what exactly happened? You know, what's... Yeah, it's quite interesting. Well, so what was actually said? Well, she came in the room, right? And I was just sat there, sat... Are you with me? He would actually go through the interesting bit. So I was just sat there, and she said, Why are you sat there when you could go outside and get me some things from the kitchen? Now, I was just about to do that, and then she said, you never do anything for me. You think? You talk it through. This is down the pub, remember? <laughs> Conservatism. Well, I don't know, mate. I mean, what do you want to do? 
what do you want to do? We should think about what we should do, you know, try and make it a bit better. I mean, what, if she comes back or not. The thing is, you've still got to think about your life. Anyway, you? You've still got to think about what kind of, you know, what you see in the future or, you know, something constructive. Uh, I mean, do you want to do anything this evening? You know, take your mind off things a bit. You know, perhaps we could, uh, um, I don't know, what would you like to do? Go to bed. Go to what? <laughs> 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 yeah, um, you know, and strong interest. Well, you know, I think that's, you know, perhaps we could go to a nightclub or whatever. Strong interest. At the nightclub, you know, he comes up into cheerfulness, you know, bring him up to cheerfulness. He has a bar, he don't have a drink. See, mate, it ain't all that bad in the end, is it? And anyway, she'll come back. She'll come back. You know, or whatever. Uh, and then you go into enthusiasm. I mean, I don't know how far you're going to take this guy because he's just lost his girlfriend. <laughs> but you get the idea that higher up here, there's more understanding of life. You can see more, you can understand more. Whereas when you're down in it, yeah, there's not a lot that you can see or understand about life. <laughs> If you see what I mean. Oh, but you're right. <laughs> Does that kind of make sense? So these energies and these wavelengths, I think I find it fascinating. I'll tell you my sources at the end. Blow your mind. Anyway, shall we? Um... <laughs> shall we do a bit of that? Um... This is the Tesla coil. This is a small, miniature, tiny weeny, tiddly tiddly, baby model of the original Tesla coil. <laughs> this is just a tabletop model. The original one was the size of a barn. <laughs> it was 50 feet in diameter. Much bigger than this room. Um, uh, <laughs> And that made lightning bolts, uh, 12 million volts lightning bolts, as he was pumping energy into the ground. Remember with this idea of how do you get energy from here, from A to B. Um, shall we just shut up and turn it on? Yeah, yeah. yeah stop doing that talking stuff. No, turn I it on. Sorry, I want to understand, yeah. like from, from, you know, my very layman understanding of Tesla coils. Um, my understanding is it's free energy and you're about to plug it into the wall. So I where does that fit? Right. <laughs> huge, huge, huge misunderstanding. The Tesla coil is not a free energy device. But you're going to have to really get down to defining what do you mean by free? Do you mean that you don't have to pay for it? For example, a windmill. What's well, free electric, you know, like free electric, right? You just get a wind jenny up and it produces free electricity. Well, so that's one definition of the word free. The other definition is that it comes from out of the magic of the universe and suddenly you can charge a battery out of thin air. Some people think that that's also what they seek to do. Like me. <laughs> but the Tesla coil itself is nothing other than a transformer. Sorry, I can't hear you then. Sorry, what did you say? Okay? 
in the same way, if I get a hose pipe... Well, you, are you getting A what you put in, or are you... So, can I just complete, and then you'll understand. Huh? If I get a hose pipe, yeah, that's going... That's like 10 volts, yeah? All this water coming out, yeah, 10 volts, and I go... Squish. It's now a thousand volts. It's now a thousand volts. Well, no, it's the same amount of water coming out. Yeah, it's just volts. It's the same amount of energy, right? If it rises, there's no extra energy coming from nowhere. It's squished. Now, what the confusion is here that I suspect that most people have is, is that they don't know what volts means. Or amps, or watts. So we want to know. It's very simple. Okay, you ready? Imagine there's a bloke here with a fire hose, right? <laughs> Firing up to the top story window of a house. Got him? Now imagine I've got one of them super soakers, water pistols, right? Pumped it right up, yeah? Okay, we can both reach the top story window, right? High pressure. Both reach up the top. That's a thousand volts. The pressure is the volts. Okay? It's how much squirt is it? How much, is it a lot of squirt or, you know, is it quantity? It's how much pressure is it? Got it? <coughs> the next thing is the amps which is the quantity of it, okay? So we've got a thousand volts here, because it's reaching the top story, a thousand volts here, to reaching the top story, they're both a thousand volts, but the fire hose has a lot more quantity of water. That's it, it's a thousand amps. Whereas my little water post still is only one amp. Got it? It's only one amp. Even though it's still the same, it's high voltage, but it's <laughs> whereas his is <laughs> got it? So that's the difference between volts and amps. The volts is the pressure, and the is the, the quantity of it. How big is it? Are we talking Niagara Falls or me, or me bath tap? <laughs> They're both coming out about the same, kind of dropping down. But there's a lot more out there now Niagara Falls than there is out my town. <laughs> See, we men know a thing or two about pressure lines. You get it now. You get it, baby. I'll be you And my next question was what? That's the next thing that I was going to say. So what is a volt? And what is a, what is a what and what is a volt? <coughs> I don't know if anybody knows here, but I run an international wizard school where I send out parcels to people every month. If you go to Google and type in kid stuff, kid stuff, just type it into Google, it comes up first. International wizard school, I send parcels every month to folks. And this is one of the things that I show. Um, a watt is simply uh, a qu overall amount of energy. It's the over. It, it's the amount of energy that's there. Just quickly, if you were to look at the fire hose going, <laughs> then you were to look at the water pistol going. <laughs> I'm sure that you could see that the fire hose has more energy. Huh? There's more watts in that. And how you work it out is this. You multiply the two together, the volts and the amps. So, a thousand <laughs> volts, pssst, yeah, the, 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 they're both a thousand volts, so a thousand volts times a thousand amps. Well, that's a million watts. A thousand times a thousand is a million. Okay? That's a million watts. Whereas my water pistol is a thousand volts, but only one amp. So it's only a thousand watts. A thousand times one. Got it? That's what watts are. And every item, every
every electrical item will tell you how many watts it is. You ready? My laptop computer. This is very useful if you put solar panels up. Has anybody got a solar panel? <laughs> anybody here interested in the environment? <laughs> anybody here noticed about, you know, solar panel on eBay, you know, average, you know, 100 quid or something? Um, if, you, if you look on here, my job, I don't know if I can find it here now. It is, there we go, 19 volts. I'm asking you this now, I'm going to ask you a question now. Now that I've taught you, now I'm going to ask you a question. <clears throat> it says on the back here, it is 19 volts at 2.1 amps. So how many watts does my laptop use? 30. 39, that would do. So basically it's like the 2 and a bit times 19. Yeah, about 14, 30, about 40. We've got it? It's about 40. So my laptop uses 40 watts <coughs> per hour. Everything's per hour. So a solar panel, there's a 50 watt solar panel for every one hour of sun. It'll run that for just over an hour, hour and a quarter. My 50 watt solar panel would run my 20 watt light bulbs for two and a half hours. For, for every hour of sun, I could either have two and a half light bulbs or I could have two and a half hours in the evening with one. Okay, that it? That's it. Is it? Well, why don't they say this stuff at school? The trouble is, is at school they make everything so complicated. What teacher did wake up with jumpers like that, so he didn't miss it. Absolutely. <laughs> and he didn't have toys as well. He didn't have toys. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So. All this is, is this is a squisher. It's the same amount of energy that I'm putting in that I'm getting out. So that all this is doing is getting a fire hose and going squish. Okay. So where did Tesla's come from? Here, no, he pumped it in the ground. But you see, what the point that we're missing here, that I will come to, if I, I will come to, um, is why he was doing this. Well, we'll come to that in a minute. But shall we just play with it for a minute? Yeah. Um, okay, in order to play with it, we need to switch the... Put that on for a start. Is somebody able to man the lights? Yeah, just give a shout. Okay. If we, if we do about another five or ten minutes... That's what, exactly what I've got going. Exactly what I've got going. Okay, you ready? I hope you're all. I'm not. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I suppose I could. I'm just No, that's all the lights of the entirety of the physical universe. Sorry, guys. Don't plug that one back in. Right, okay. So, are we ready? So, this is quarter of a million volts. Quarter of a million volts. 250,000 volts. And altogether, this is 300 watts of power, okay? This is enough to kill many people, okay? So I'll get you to it. Have to it. <laughs> yes, I made it test it. Can everybody see it? Can everybody see it? Yeah. You can make music with what fuel is making music with a Tesla coil. Yeah. And it's got some interesting phenomena. So like this is a um, fluorescent tube. Yeah. Oh, it's a broken fluorescent tube. Oh, Christ. It's a broken fluorescent tube. Go go and get another one. In the meantime, I'll just get the other. Right. Check. 
That'll do for the moment. Just a little quickie. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an interesting thing. Can you see in the center here, there's a dark spot. Everybody see that? In between my hands? Whoops, hang on. There, yeah? The dark spot. <laughs> now what it is, is um, when this, ha this is giving out alternating current. This is giving out alternating. So this is going positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. A hundred thousand times a second. Very, very fast. You know, ordinary mains is 50 times a second. That everybody hears is that, oh, you know, you can hear it in the back of music equipment sometimes, or the fridge, or that noise is 50 times a second. Whereas this is turning on and off 100,000 times a second. 100,000 times a second. Um, but what's happening there in the middle is that um, when this hand is positive, this hand is negative. And when this hand is positive, that hand is negative. So it's creating a wave that's doing that. Got it? And that bit in the middle, that bit in the middle there, is a null point. There's no electricity there. A bit like if you pluck a guitar string um, and you put your finger in the middle, it will go wibble wobble. Yeah, you wibble wobble. Um, I know, here we are. If I held a guitar string like that and put my finger just, just t stopping it a little bit, <coughs> these two would be going wibble wobble, wibble wobble, wibble wobble, but the bit in the middle is staying still. That's what that is. Interesting, isn't it? And you can change the frequency quite a lot by getting something like... Um, all right. So the Tesla coil, you can change its frequency. You ready? Well, maybe I should show you that after the break. Because it's another interesting thing. I, th I think that will do for the moment. Let's take a break, shall we? Well, Okay. Um, well, listen, I don't really plan what I'm going to say at any of these things. I just kind of turn up and, and see what happens, really. I mean, it seems to work out okay. I think everybody's enjoyed, been enjoying it so far. Yeah? Looks quite reasonably positive feedback. Um, okay. Um, well, the Tesla coil again. Some people are very interested in the Tesla coil. And for me, my understanding of it is that it's a research tool. That's what I look at it as being. It's a tool. Oh, perfect. Oh, thank you very much. 
the pair here. Yeah, nice. Um, so, basically, when Tesla was playing about with his Tesla coils, <coughs> when Tesla was playing around with his Tesla coils, all sorts of extraordinary things happened. So we should get on that route. Um, <laughs> uh, it's so funny, I had one of these ones that I made a small one about this size with a brass knob on the front and I had it running by two transistors at the front and I can remember literally I was standing there like this showing people this Tesla coil here with these two transistors at the top of it here and I was saying it's an extraordinary device, you know, and the energy comes racing up through the bottom, just shooting out of the top, it's an extraordinary uh, thing. Again, how, how many people um, actually cottoned on to it or not, and then some people started laughing and stuff, it was very funny. Uh, I, you had to be there. But you had to be there, I suppose so, I suppose you have to say that. Well, I've been doing this for so long now, I mean, this is like quarter of a century. Um, that I've been showing, talking to people about Tesla and going around and giving these demonstrations. But I've been running workshops a lot longer than that on all sorts of topics, including past lives. And uh, like, for example, last night we ran a past life session in front of everybody. So that was rather, rather nice. A lady came forward and we ran a past life session and she, you know, and she looked at her past life and stuff like that. It's very interesting. So we can do that or we can. Um, See some more sparky stuff? Um, or we can stop. Sparky stuff, it did it sparky. You've been talking a bit about all my right as well. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, right. Um, orgone energy. Let me give you an example of orgone energy. Orgone, if we, we can make some orgone here. You need organic material. There's normally a man here that sells it. Yeah, yeah, but you can make it. Um, we need organic material. Um, and then two pieces of non-organic material. Um, so paper, well it's not a brilliant one. I've got some tobacco. <laughs> no non-organic, yeah. so metal. Well if you've got tobacco and a piece of silver foil, and then, <laughs> no, I'm serious, if you've got, if you've got, if you've got uh, right, any organic material with silver foil underneath, um, like a Kit Kat, the inside of a Well actually a Kit Kat is about, about the but, they, but the two layers have got to be separate. So, salt, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, salt would be all right on this tissue. On this tissue. Okay. Right. Now, that probably should work. But what we need is something like a little piece of tin foil. Does anybody want a sweet in their pocket? Or a little piece of tin foil? Um, what have we got? Well, a coin. Hang on a minute, I've got a coin. I've got a coin. I've got a coin. So we've got, um, this is organic material, paper, wood. Then we've got salt, mineral, and now we've got metal. Got it? Uh, this coin. So the three of them together... Right, now hang on a minute. Okay. Fine. Right, if you hold it, wait a minute. <coughs> when people, can you see this energy now that I'm creating here? Can you see the energy? No. You can't see the energy. <coughs> okay? Are you getting the idea? Can you get, write this energy here from it? Is anybody getting that? What it does is it's extraordinary. What it, how it relates to a being, yes? And does extraordinary things to attention. As you can see, you're a on. What it does is it, 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 it works on the human attention. Okay? Have you got it now? Can everybody get that? Okay? Has everybody got that? Are you beginning to get that? Right? Okay. Well, as far as I can see, it's working perfectly. I've certainly got your attention. <laughs> got it? All going. Are you saying it's rubbish? No, not at all. Everybody was going. 
Yeah, but that's what nothing to do with that. You could have held up anything. Correct. Be looking at it Correct. Right. And so, I often do. So that, but, you know, no, but you're missing the point. You're missing the point. If you're simply dismissing, because all I'm saying is, is it's to do with attracting attention. No, attracting attention is a vital consequence. Okay. The, uh, so, the Wilhelm Markinson Institute I, I explains it a lot better than that. Oh, good. <laughs> well, perhaps you should have them come. <laughs> well, you know, people can watch their... their but That's he, fine. He basically says that um, plastics or organic material draw in energy, whereas metals kind of draw it in and then bake it out. So sure. by having layers sure. and, kind of, and put in a box, inside that box you've got loads of energy going around like that, which is what, it, what it's all about. Which makes me kind of question if organite, because organite is actually surrounded in the organic material rather than having it boxed. So it's just drawing in. Might be baiting around your side, but it's not coming back out again because it only goes one way through the organic material. So that's, that, that, that's what they say. <laughs> okay. Good. I'm glad they do. I'm glad they do. Great. Um, so I think that the difficulty is that because I explain something simply does not mean to say that I dismiss it. In fact, exactly the reverse. Exactly the reverse. Oh, definitely organite works. I've seen some extraordinary things happening with organite. You put some of that on your kitchen table and you do it well and you see what it does. Everybody starts talking about the cosmos, cosmos, everybody starts getting into, well, what is a being? And everybody starts talking about intention and attention and human emotions and things like that instead of just watching EastEnders. <laughs> right? It, 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 that's the very least that it does. Anyway, shall I get on to what I was going to be doing? Everybody happy with that? Okay. Um, but did everybody understand what I did there? Does everybody understand that? What my understanding of it is? I understand that other people have under th other understandings. Well, one right in his organisation. Fine. <laughs> Not me. That's fine just... then. So, okay, that, so. <laughs> that's fine. I mean, I've looked at it for 25 years myself, and those are my understandings. And it's not a dismissal, not at all. Um, it's the same with radionics. You see what well. I'm saying, though? Because organoid was actually created after his death. He, he created these boxes. Sure. Well, what, all we can do is we can suggest to other people, because that's not, I mean, if other people would like to research that, that's a great thing to do. But it's not really, you know, I've, I've explained where I'm at with that. And I do not dismiss it at all. I do exactly the reverse. I simply simplify the understandings. So you saying that it's human attention? That, that is what That's one of the things that it operates on. That's one of the things. Well, can I ask what, what, what it did for your kitchen uh, table? So you, you said you put it on the table and it had an effect. Uh, did you, you mention the kitchen? Or, or you, you okay, so have you not understood the example that I've yeah. given? Well, probably not. I'm asking that question. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. My because she's asked me about organite, whereas I was going to talk about the tesla coil. But we can talk about organite if you like. My understanding of organite is very simple. Very simple, and that is that one of the things that it does <coughs> is that it it, it relates directly to this human soul, and that's intention, attention, uh, wavelengths of a being. And as such, you would find that if you put some of that on your table, you would find that the whole conversations that are happening are of a much higher wavelength. No, I didn't think about that, that bones and that. But my experience of it was, um, somebody showed me some of their ones, and they said, oh, if you put your hand above it, you'll feel all this energy from it. And I did that, and I didn't feel anything, until about 12 hours later. <laughs> then about 12 hours later, my hand buzzed for about 24 hours, I would say. It was like there's a little electric code going, that's what that's my yeah. so. so really, you guys could do with communicating further about that. In terms of, you know, <coughs> I was hoping to communicate with the guy who had 25 years experience. No, Kerry, Kerry, no, just not specifically that. Seriously, we're doing out what of, I'm trying to say. We're going out of control on the whole yeah. question, question, question. I know, it's just. Let's yeah, just but but she's asked the question, and I've, as far as I understand, I've answered it. 
Moving on. I think that, ha, ha, let's have a hands show. How many people feel as though they've understood what I have to say about foregoing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just about everybody. So that's what I have to contribute about that, and it seems as though the majority of people here are satisfied with that. So there is further that can be researched about that, and I'm sure that if you go to Google and you type in Organite, then there's lots and lots and lots of things. Um, okay. Are you satisfied with that at the moment? I was satisfied about 10 minutes ago, but we need to let this research. Okay. So, um, yes, this is a research tool, and from this research came many things. For example, the fluorescent tube came while, fluores while Tesla was experimenting this. In other words, he thought at one point, hey, why don't I bring like a kind of bowl up to it. Now if I take all the air out of it, I wonder if that would I wonder what that would do. Oh it's lit up. <laughs> How did that happen? Wow, you know, and so it's a it's a thing, it's because it's extraordinary, um, it's fascinating to see what it does. And the way that you find out what it does is by experimenting. Um, so he's uh, so it came from this as well is radio. Or you saw this light up without wires, the tube lit up without wires. That's because that's wireless. The original wireless, meaning radio. So your mobile phone in your pocket was invented because of the Tesla coil. That's when it was discovered, radio, in any meaningful way. Um, mains electricity, ordinary household 240 volts mains electricity alternating came from this research. So it's been pretty handy this little gadget. It's given us mains electricity, radio, fluorescent tubes, oh, electron microscopes, uh, it's given us loads of things, ignition coils for cars, um, lots of stuff. Anyway, shall we, um, shall we have the light back out and we'll change the frequency? Because that's what I was going to do next, wasn't it? Okay, so lights out. Anybody can do that? Um, He's just going to do it. I'm um, ah. Right, are we ready? So, what I'll do is I'll change the frequency of it somewhat. No, that's the one. I've actually clicked that one. Oh. Aha, oh, I see a bike. Aha. <laughs> So I'm going to make the frequency lower. So uh, here's a teaspoon. So I think, what do you think? <laughs> A uh, quarter of a million volts at 300 watts. Think of how many light bulbs that would light up. Can you see the edge of the piece So all that electricity is rushing through me now.
Sometimes I put crystals on the top, which makes it a little bit like a resistor. It's kind of easier so that when you touch it, you don't feel it quite so strongly. And um, I had a lovely one at the festival where I was giving somebody a demonstration. It looked a bit like, like people gathered around at the festival. And this guy came up and said, uh, yeah, excuse me, mate. Uh, got, got a lot. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm sorry I haven't got a mic. But uh, can you just mind that? <laughs> yeah, but... I just, I just, just want a light. You've got a light. Look, I'm sorry, I've got a quarter of a million volts here. Could you stand back a bit? Sorry, somebody else will give you a light. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I just want to find the light, mate. That's all I want. Okay. If I turn it on, that'll freak him out and he'll just. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, right, turn it up, full blast, right? And I turned it on, yeah? And, he, and it was going, <laughs> and he gets his, and goes, oh, right, thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his head in, oh, I'm not kidding you, there were sparks coming out of his face, out of his eyeballs. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you that one of the biggest researches that happened with me with it, and I can only talk about my own personal experience here, and this one you're going to sound, is either, oh yes, it truly is bonkers, or it's absolutely amazing. And that is that usually I would describe to people how it works. Oh, hang on a minute, let me sort this microphone out. One more, that's a bit better. Um, so normally I kind of explain, okay, there's, we've got to this electricity, which I often have, it's solar powered. So I have a solar a, a battery, a, a solar cell, solar panel, charging a 12 volt battery. Okay, so you just, does everybody know how to charge a 12 volt car battery with a solar panel? No? Okay, if you buy a solar panel from eBay for about 100 quid, 80 quid or something, it's got two wires coming out of the back. Right, it's got a wire. One's red and one's black, right? And then on a car battery, it says positive and negative. Res on red, see, somebody could do it. So the red goes on the positive and the black goes on the negative. That's it. Oh, you've got to point out of the sun. Okay? And then the battery charges. Okay, that's like how you charge a battery. So, depends how big the battery, is, how big the solar panel is. Depends how. And how are we talking car battery? Or are we talking car battery, mate? <laughs> it depends on how big it is. Solar panel. Solar panel. It's, you know. <laughs> Where you look at the volts and the amps and the watts, and on the battery it will tell you how many amps it is, and on the back of the solar panel it will tell you how many amps it is. Oh, okay. So you can see, right, this battery will hold 60 amps, and this thing says that it will produce 6 amps. <laughs> 10, hours. 10, hours. 10 hours. In full sunlight. Right, if you put it in the garage, it's going to charge it at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's 10 hours during the day, yeah, it's not at night. Um, but so that's how you charge a 12-volt a, a battery. The other thing is, well, how do you get mains electricity from a car battery? Well, yeah, there's a thing called an inverter. You can buy them on eBay from 20 quid up to 200 quid for a big posh one. Basically, it's got a socket on the front, you know, like an ordinary mains three-pin socket. That you plug stuff into, and on the back of it, it's got two wires. One's black, <laughs> and one's red. Usually have clips on them as well. Yes. Now this bit you're not going to believe. 
If you go to the battery, right, with the red and the black lead, and you stick them on it, you get mains out. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. It's not any more complicated than that. That is the whole solar system. You know, we 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 kind of taught no solar power. You know, that's extraordinary. You want to do electronics to see in order to implement something like that. No, no, it goes solar and that. Yeah, wrap the wires around the car battery, like that. Should charge that, and then get your inverter out, clip them on, and you plug things in. What's the problem? That's it. Um, but anyway, so usually I have solar powered mains electricity that I plug this in. So that when people see that, I'm explaining that that is actually converted solar energy. That started off at photons. <laughs> you see how, what I mean? And then, then I've converted that. So I'm very interested in transforming energy. Because if we want to t charge things up, you know, if you're researching alternative energies, oh yeah, I'm definitely interested in very, very interesting methods for, for getting energy out. And um, I actually built the Tesla coil because I consider that you as a being, like I started off the talk, are a source point of energy. Wouldn't it be nice if you had some sort of obscure, weird kind of transformer thing that you could convert the energy of a being? Let's all send our energy on in Wouldn't it be amazing if you could transfer some of the energy of a being um, through some device that's got no batteries, you don't plug it in, you just, you know, let's say a little spark or something, you know, it, it, you, you just smile at it. <laughs> you know, let's say you have two silver balls on it and some coils and a capacitor and a something or other and two little wires here. And when you kind of, you, you, you do something nice with these two things, you, you, you love one and then, and then you, you, you pull one and push one and pull one and push one and then you push this one and pull one. You know, whatever it is you have to do, and then eventually it stores up in the capacitor and it goes, little spark. Can you imagine? A little, just little, little spark. Just from being power. That would do for me. That would be sufficient. Um, because then you can scale that up somewhat. Uh, so that then, you, instead of it like being a spark like this, you could then use this, because this works back to front as well. If you put that kind of <laughs> energy in there, you get mains out of here. It works back to front. This is both ways. Interesting. So that's what I was interested in. It is, can I, <laughs> and you know, get mains out? Or at least, um, you know, can you imagine if you could charge a car battery by smiling at it with this thing? You know, you just come along. All right, mate, nice battery, how's it going? That's nice, oh, that's good. Do you keep going on the 10 amps here, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, nice, I like it. So whenever you put your tension on it, it's, you know, pumping in the electricity. I mean, don't laugh at it. Don't go into hysterical laughter, otherwise it overcharge it and smoke comes out of it. And, you know, some guy came over the other day, yeah, in hysterics, you know, blew up my batteries by overcharging them. Too much laughing, you know. You need a charge control. Um, well, yes. In which way? Are we talking about a charge controller for laughing? Yeah. Well, seriously, I would suggest a switch. But basically, yeah. And that's how I use, you know, if you're, um, you know, in other words, don't overcharge it. Once your batteries are charged, well, just pick it off. So even if you are laughing, it won't overcharge your batteries. No, that's the kind of direction that I genuinely feel mankind could go. Because I understand that all energies actually do come essentially from soul, if you like. All of, all of it does. Um, 
I mean, let's face it, the whole universe has sort of sprung up out of nothingness, somehow, or sprung up out of soul. I mean, all, all of this, everything that we're experiencing seems to have magic up out of nothing, isn't it? It's all pretty magic, really, isn't it? No, no, it's not magic, it's just normal, you know, it's just, um, <coughs> it's just Tuesday. <laughs> um, mm. So, what should we talk about next? You had a bombshell, didn't you? You said you got a bombshell. Oh. You want to talk about that one? Oh, yes, please. Well, that'd be a good bombshell. Okay. Are you ready for this, then? I have many sources of information, and I've been researching many kind of religions, philosophies, you know, whatever. I have, yeah, magic. I have my own uh, religion or applied philosophy uh, that's called Fixia. In other words, I've decided that for me, <clears throat> I would like my own one of these religions things. Yes, I think they look rather fun. I'm going to have one of those for my own. So I've designed my own. <laughs> and I call it Fexia. And it comes from the Greek theta, which is where the word thought comes from. Aristotle and Plato used to use it. It's, it, it's a circle with a line through it. Theta. And uh, it used to mean thought, or more accurately, soul or spirit. They used to use the symbol theta to mean you as a being. And now I've, I've coined my word, fixia, which comes also from the Latin ex, E-X, as in exit, or expansion, or explosion. It means out. So my philosophy is about soul, out, like out of the physical universe, out of any traps. Or another way of looking at it is perhaps thought explosion, or soul explosion, thought expansion, soul exit. You get the idea? Sexier. If you type it into Google, it comes up first. Uh, however, currently at the moment, it's closed. <coughs> if you want a religion, yeah, get your own. <laughs> I am the original Fixian. <laughs> There's only one. <laughs> this, however, now comes an interesting bombshell. While you're researching, you come across things in extraordinary places. And I'm very interested in researching everything about life, love, magic, and fun. And uh, it's quite a nice scale, isn't it? The original one has got 137 points on here is extremely accurate, very, very refined. For example, uh, in around here is propitiation, like appeasement, you know, giving gifts. You know, or, you know, look, you know, you know, it's like giving, you know, to, 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 to give, to, to, to stop somebody coming at you, you give them things. Propitiation, that's in about here somewhere. Um, up here you've got other ones like uh, uh, games and uh, action, real action, you know, <laughs> no mucking about, <laughs> getting stuff done, real fast and fun. Um, so this is a multi, multi thing. I got that from somebody else. It's nice, isn't it? You're not going to believe where I've got it. eBay. Okay. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> eBay. eBay. Yeah. 3 dollars mate. Yeah, that would be a scale. It's like to come up with it. <laughs> There's that and so many of the things that I've been speaking about. Not everything, by far. But many of them. Are you ready for this? So my secret services, Scientology. Isn't that fascinating? So, just because 
I mean, has anybody heard of Scientology? Yeah. Okay. In a wonderfully positive light? <laughs> Do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. You see, when somebody tells me, oh, don't go anywhere near those uh, cults, you know, they're terrible, blah, blah, blah. As far as I'm concerned, oh, interesting. Let me go look under the bonnet myself. You see? And yet, what people tend to do is that they go and listen to rumours about other people who've said this about what was said about what they did, but that they said that they possibly did when they did, and they didn't, even though they deny that the fact that they didn't when they did. And not many people actually go out, go out to what the geezer who, who made it and one of his books and read it. Actually go and look at what it's, you know, what's good in there. Why, how come you've got people who are interested in things? By the way, I am not a member of the Church of Scientology. I'm much better than that. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but nevertheless, there are many writings of, a, of the chap called Ron Hubbard mm -hmm. that I find quite, quite fascinating. And I wouldn't withhold from you, I wouldn't withhold from you, my sources of information. I like transparency. Even though it's controversial, but I still find that that is interesting. And I think everybody has found that. <clears throat> I used to be a member of the Scientology's the Scientology organization back in 1978, up until 1983. So for about five years. And um, at that time, then it crashed and got taken over, infiltrated by the yeah, CIA, FBI, because they don't want people like you knowing stuff like that. You just carry on thinking it's a bad thing, okay? Go, go to YouTube and say it's all terrible, get on with it. Not only that, but then they infiltrated it and also made sure that it did do some bad stuff. Right? Switch everybody off from it. But if you go back and look at some of the original books and things, this is a tiny, little, tiny snippet <clears throat> of some of the datums. Listen to this one. You as a being do not consist of matter, energy, space, or time. You as a being are exterior to the physical universe. Ron Hubbard, Scientology. Isn't that fascinating? And yet we've all kind of gone, oh yeah, that's quite interesting. <laughs> See? <laughs> um, I'm not suggesting that everybody goes off and joins the Church of Scientology. But what I am saying is that when researching, don't be put off by, oh, you shouldn't look at that, oh, they're a cult. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, well, let's go and have a look myself. <coughs> I hear what you say, I'll go look for myself. Interesting. But I will act with caution. Thank you. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this thing then. <laughs> Tell me about it. Okay, well, that's interesting. So I would suggest to anybody that could go to eBay um, and uh, yeah, get a couple of Scientology books. Right. Interesting read. You'd be quite surprised. You would be quite surprised. Right. And oh yeah, and um, past life recalls and things like that. Excellent. So they have meters and things. Anybody want to see a meter and a past life stuff? Anybody want to see a past life? Um, go to the van, go and get these things. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Somebody got the keys? I'm doing oh, the keys. Yeah? Your keys. Yeah. Um, okay, there's a, a grey meter with two cans in the back, in the boot. I think it's in the blue plastic, big blue plastic box. Thank you. Um, so we could run, we could, we could run a past life session here, or we could, yeah. Well, you're volunteering somebody else. <laughs> no, no. But, but if there's anybody here who would be interested in, has anybody here ever had the idea of, of kind of, any pictures or anything from the past, or you know, the idea of you lived before, possibly. Has anybody had you? you have? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. Many times. Right. Okay. Well, who, who, who would like? If how does anybody feel about the idea that we ran just for 
20 minutes, lovely enough. Can I see a show of hands as to who would be interested in, if I ran a session up here with somebody and showed you on a meter, um, you know, as they're going through through it and what they're looking looking at, and uh, so we could actually run a past life session here and, with everybody to see. Yeah, yeah, People are interested yeah, in that? Yeah? yeah? yeah of okay. So, <laughs> who shall we have as a volunteer? Now, you are volunteering somebody else that <laughs> met of their own. Their own. <laughs> so, it's either this chap you've volunteered. <laughs> oh no, sorry, not volunteer, but you mentioned that. That's an idea, yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, you'll see when we bring in a meter. If I show you the meter first, then you'll understand. So it's going to bring it in in a second. Then we'll need two chairs up here. And, um, yeah, it's all rather fun. <laughs> The what? Yes. Yes. Well, the reason why I'm saying that, it, that the bomb share was me saying the word Scientology, with reference to things like this, in that many people have understood, oh, it's a terrible thing, blah blah blah, and I say, well, it may well be, and it may not well not be. That's up to people to evaluate themselves. But what I'm suggesting is, just because you hear something about something. Doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't go look. You see, <coughs> because I've got amazing things from it, uh, amongst other things. Don't get, you know, it's not my only source of stuff. So, can everybody see the meter here? Oh, no. Does anybody want to come close and just drag your chairs up here? Can I stand there? Can I stand there? Can I stand there? Right. Right, now, can everybody see this needle? Can everybody see, no, can everybody see this needle? That's what you need to be able to see, is that needle, okay? Um, there's still more room on the ceiling if anybody wants to stick themselves to the new ceiling. Or... Okay. Um, all right. So, so let's let's have another check here as to who who gets the idea that they've kind of you know some pictures or some ideas that maybe they've had some other life or that there's more to life than just. What they've experienced so far. I just feel like I've been here before. Really. You feel like you've been here before? Yeah. Okay. And what what do you say? You said I've never been here before. No, you've been here before. Absolutely. Well, thousands of like? times. Millions of times. Okay. Right. And, and you too. Okay, so we, there's, there's quite a lot of reality here of people getting the idea of these things. Well, this is a very useful tool um, to help you uncover those things. And I've used one of these for 30 years or so. <coughs> on and off. Mostly off. <laughs> um, however, I find it fascinating. Do you have a name? Yes, this is called an electro-psychometer. Or e-meter. Um, and again, this is a Scientology meter. You have, to, you have to take this test before you join the Scientologist? No. Well, they, that's what they do for your, to get your psyche, psyche evaluation or something like that. Well, that's what I'm led to believe. I'll, sh I'll show you exactly what it does. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, now, what the Scientologists are doing today is very different to what they were doing 30 years ago. So I can only really speak of the positives that I've experienced. Whether there's nutcases doing crazy stuff now, I don't know. I don't really care. What I care about is what here is of value. 
and I would like to show you those things. Is it like Satyam healing? A what? Is it like Satyam healing? You know, like the Egyptian healing with the energies with Satyam. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. Satyam. Okay. No. Satyam's like Reiki. He's talking about his past life, so. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, I have not heard that word before. It's okay. Um, right. So I need a volunteer. <laughs> no, no what? No. If you're going to ask the question, I need to get Oh no no no! Oh, oh, okay. Oh, shush, 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 shush. oh we can't um, so, so 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 wait a minute. Wait 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 wait. Well, let's let's have a look. Let's let's have somebody who's not big. Has anybody? Because you've had a go on this before. Because we did this at no, another festival. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> He's seen some of the things that we've done before. Because he's seen this before. So, um, can you have a go? Me? Yeah. All right. So if we, um, if you sit here, I mean, I didn't mean a past life session. This is just a quickie, just to show people what the meter does. Okay. Just so that people get the idea of what it's for. And as I say, this is this is how it's used in a positive light. Okay. I mean, I suppose you you could use it as a lie detector and security thing, which um, you know you could use it like that. But this is how it's used positively. Okay. So let's turn it on. Time to then I'll find triple. Okay. Could I ask everybody to be quiet now? Yeah? So we've just got it nice and quiet. So what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to ask you to squeeze the cans, all right? So, um, so I want you to take from about this pressure that you've here, and then, and then when I say squeeze the cans, I want you to go Okay, so when I say it, I want you to go up and down. Got it? So at the moment they're just, they're not tight, they're just, you know, as if you're holding the side of a glass or something, you know. So it's just good contact, but it's not squeezing. Got it? Okay. Okay, squeeze the counts, please. Recall that pinch. Thank you. Recall that pinch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again. So each time your attention sweeps over it, you get a movement. Recall that pinch. Thank you. So has everybody seen that? Everybody understood what's happening there? Recall that pitch. Thank you. Got it? Um, all right. So it can register not just a little pinch that you've just had, but incidents in the past. So things that have been in your past where you have stored um, energy. So what it's showing is not necessarily a positive or a negative, just whoo, some reaction to it. Um, mother. Father. Mm -hmm. You get the idea? So that you can see, you know, how strong it is. So, for example, 
um, say you were going through a list where you were talking about uh, mother, father, sister, Auntie Mabel, uncle thing, you know, and Auntie Mabel went boing, and you said, and then you know, uncle, uncle, somebody or other, and and and, and uh, what, uh, I don't know, um, your daughter or something, um, and none of the others showed much reaction, and then they start saying, yeah, well, the trouble is with my father, right? Um, you know, the thing, da, 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 da. You, you then because it went Auntie Mabel, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, yeah, well, the trouble is with my father, blah de blah de blah de blah de blah de blah de blah Well, what you, your job then is to say, tell me a little bit more about Auntie Mabel. Auntie Mabel? Why are we talking about that? I don't see why we should talk about Auntie Mabel. There's nothing there. I'll, you know, we've got on all right, you know. And the needle's going like this. Well, when you start talking about it, you discover, well, I don't really see why we're talking about Auntie Mabel anyway. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, true, it's true to say that she looked after me when I broke my leg, and, you know, and, so, <laughs> there's something there to be counselled. This is a counselling tool. So it's like for going fishing, you know, for... for <laughs> counselling. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. All right. So can everybody be quiet again now? Okay. Okay. Internet pornography. <laughs> not, actually, not a, not a huge read. Sometimes that goes bam. <laughs> smoke comes out of the eyes. It usually happens when somebody, when some chap's standing there with his wife next to him. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> it's really funny. Um, but uh, mo no, 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 no. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you do or don't or whatever. Um, sex. Uh, money. Girlfriend. <laughs> but you, but you'd have to go through quite a list until you identified something that you know that made somebody you know that there was something in there to fish for. Um, recall that pinch. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I mean that's basically what I was just showing here. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Um, so does everybody see then that 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 same pinch was still there? Yeah. Everybody got that? Uh, another interesting was the fact that you registered just when you said the word pinch before you'd actually. Yes. Didn't you know? That's the anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Of he's going to pinch me. <laughs> um, and sometimes that's much bigger than the actual pinch. It's interesting, which says quite a lot about life. Yeah. You know, the fear of something is quite often more than. Oh, it wasn't that bad after all. Yes. So is this just measuring like, the electricity that's going on mm. in your brain? Very simple. It's nothing to do with brain. It's just simply, this is sending a small amount of electricity, it's about half a volt, from that hand to this hand. And it's measuring resistance. Just resistance. Yeah? And I'll just complete. Um, and when you as a being not the brain, but you as a being, when you think things, different things, you cause different amounts of resistance. It's an extraordinary phenomenon. It's amazing, as we've just seen. Um, this was invented in about 1935, um, and then the Scientologists used this as starting from about 1950, and then adapted and made it more and more interesting and interesting, and refined it. Um, you could say it's similar technology to a lie detector, it's a very similar in a way, but it's quite nice, handy, you know, it's designed for, as a counselling tool, rather than identifying if you are lying, you know. <laughs> um, and it's quite interesting that a lot of uh, lie detectors, um, of course, people will come up with past lives. You know, have you ever stolen anything? 
And actually, when you chased it up, yeah, it was in 1736 when they went into a butcher shop and they pitched a piece of meat, you know, or whatever. It's not necessarily this lifetime. 